dirt spain stuff okay. so <clears throat> we're trying to figure out exactly what designs we like so i had two different options uh for the designs so at least that's just for one of them i have three or four different designs but that was just one of them so I'll, when we're done here i'm going to go in there and, and vote yeah just uh put a fire mark next to it what's okay. up guys we are live here for fantasy intervention ready to answer your start or sit questions yes get excited guys all those questions you've been having building up all week through all of our live shows that we weren't able to answer well guess what now we are now we're here to answer all your questions and of course my sunday co-host who actually gets me straight who gets me on track with everything that i'm thinking make sure that i don't make those dumb errors of starting some sort of questionable player that should not have any business being in the game is adam What's going on, Adam? How you doing, man? Let us know a little bit about you, how you're qualified, and where we can find you. Hey, what's up, Chase? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at the real Adam H. I'm a practicing physical therapist, and that's where all that injury stuff comes in. So we'll talk some injuries and hopefully help some people set those start sit lineups today. Absolutely, man. Uh, who else do you uh, who do, who else do you work with? I work with the Undroppables. You can see on the hoodie, you can find our stuff at the undroppables.com. We got a lot of good content out there. Start sits, waiver wire columns, all that good stuff. Um, so make sure you check us out online. Dude, absolutely. And where can we find you on Twitter, of course? Handles right there, my dude, is at the real Adam underscore H. Got to put all those posers in line. People trying to steal my Twitter handle. Got to let them know who the real one is. The real one, the real Adam H. Of course, guys, he is your injury expert. So let's go ahead and start out with some injuries here, right? Because there are some people that are out that have no business being in the game. Uh, we'll start with Christian McCaffrey, who we pretty much know is going to be out this week. But is there more than meets the eye with Christian McCaffrey? Yep. So I wrote about this on Twitter, uh, talking about Christian McCaffrey. It looked like an AC joint sprain to me. Carolina Panthers haven't come out and said that definitively, but you know, sometimes video lies. But based on what I'm seeing and what they're laying out as his timetable, I think it's probably an AC joint sprain. I think he could easily miss another two weeks. So if you have Christian McCaffrey, unfortunately, he's not playing this week, and he probably uh, might be out a little bit longer. Like, like how long are we thinking here? Like, what's the possible timeline? I think it's possible. I think it's very likely he misses one more week, possibly two more weeks. I think there's a shadow of a doubt he could return in, in three weeks here, possibly four weeks, though. That's what I think we're looking at the timeline here. So definitely not next week. Probably if you had to make me pick, I would say 75% he doesn't play in week three. And then following that, it'd be 50-50 from here on out. Okay. All right. I guess that's not the worst news we've heard from Christian McCaffrey so far this year, right? No doubt. All right. So let's go ahead. Go ahead and, and run off with the next few guys that are going to be out this week. Yep. I got you here. So uh, if you got these guys in your lineups, you need to take them out. Kenny Galladay, hit pointer. We pretty much knew that was uh, not going to happen. Justin Jackson left the game early last week for the Chargers. First play, injured his knee. If you weren't following, he actually landed on IR this week, which means he's got to miss at least three weeks. I went back and looked at the video uh, last night. Look like a possible MCL injury, so putting him on IR makes sense. I think that probably is another three- to four-week injury you're looking for for Justin Jackson. Okay. Um, Seattle backfield, we've been following that one closely. Chris Carson and Carlos Hyde, same injuries. They are both out this week. Um, so, And I'm sure we'll get some questions about DJ Dallas and, and those guys, but it looks like it could be another DJ Dallas week. Um, Joe Mixon's out again with that foot sprain. So Chris Carson and Joe Mixon, I think are kind of falling in the same timelines with similar injuries here. So Joe Mixon's out another week here. Um, and then we've got Irv Smith for the Vikings. Everyone was excited about his breakout game. He's got a Monday night game against the bears. He has a groin injury. He is out. So if you were planning on using Irv Smith, you need to get another tight end this, uh, in your lineup today because he's not going to play Monday. Kyle Rudolph sexy. If he's out there. No doubt. Kyle Rudolph and sexy doesn't seem like that would go hand in hand, but it really I mean, you made it happen. You you made it happen. It is what it is, man. It is what it is. <laughs> like it, it just happens that way sometimes. Yeah, no, no doubt. Uh, Debo Samuel hamstring injury. I'm actually really hopeful that I, I think Debo Samuel could return next week. So if you've got Debo Samuel on your IR spot, I think it's probably one more week. We could see Debo Samuel return based on the timeline for hamstring injuries. Uh, we've got a pair of concussions here. David Montgomery's out with a concussion. David Johnson, 
for the Texans running back is out with a concussion. But if you weren't aware, he actually landed on IR this week too. So he's going to be out for three weeks. So David, whereas Montgomery could be easily be back next week, I think David Johnson has got to be out at least three weeks. And finally, the last guy that I have out here is LaVisca Chenault with a hamstring injury. Yeah, guys. I mean, Conley's a, a sexy play, but honestly, Conley has not been able to hold on the ball this year. And he's also had multiple misconnect, I mean, miscommunications with not only the coaching staff, but also Gardner Minshew. Now, Gardner, Gardner Minshew's not playing, but this could be a week as to where we could see a, a small breakout from Colin Johnson. So if you're in those deep leagues, he might be worth the stash, you know, at least at the back end of your rosters, especially in dynasty leagues. Now, before we go into these questionable guys and these doubtful guys, let's go ahead and answer a few of these questions. All right. We have Jamie Prague up here who... Uh, has three questions for us. We'll start out with the first one. Pick two, Jacobs, Chark, and Chubb. You know, Chark, he could be looking sexy this week, but what's the news on Jair Alexander, by the way? Do you have that updated? <clears throat> yep. So Jair, Jair Alexander, as I'm following it, was doubtful as of last night. I don't think we're going to see him. He didn't practice all week. He came out and did some stretches, but he looks like he's still in the concussion protocol. So I'll be checking that uh, late up until the, the game time. So Make sure you follow me on Twitter because if he sneaks in there, that could change things. But it's looking like Jair Alexander is going to be out. Yeah, Jair Alexander, if he's playing, I do not want any part of Chark. And and now they're going to be looking at probably back bracketed coverage on Chark, which could leave you know one on one matchups all over the place and the you know for the other receivers over there. So I still think I might lean away from Chark this week just to see what he has and go with Chubb and Jacobs. Where are you going with this one? I can't dis disrespect my boy DJ Chark. Uh, I'm going to put <laughs> Chark in there. And he did then, you right last week. I mean, DJ Chark's my dude. Uh, I'm going to be a self-proclaimed DJ Chark truther here. And then I'm going to take Nick Chubb on his first game back. They got the Texans. I think it's possible we see Nick Chubb on a little bit of a snap count. That MCL injury, I talked a little bit about it uh, earlier this week. You know, you put a knee brace on there, you get some stability. Nick Chubb's more of a north-south runner, whereas some of those guys that are have a little bit more lateral shiftiness and like to cut and pivot, maybe that MCL would, injury would hinder them a little bit more. But I think Nick Chubb, if you told me he got 12 touches against the Texans defense, I'd take taken that all day. So I'm going to play Nick Chubb and Shark in this matchup. I believe they have a tough weather matchup as well where they're going to see high gusts of wind and rain, I believe. I might be That's a good point. That. So That's you're going to see point. a lot of touches for the running backs over there. Now, all right, let's go ahead and answer these next two, and then we're going to hop off this. We're going to go back to your injury report. So Landry Boyd, Landry Boyd, once again, we have a really tough Steelers defense over there, but that's where you attack them is in the slot. I'm going to go Boyd on this one over Landry. I don't know. I don't trust the volume for for the Browns this week in the passing attack. I completely agree. I think it, when it comes to floor, TJ, uh, I'm sorry, Tyler Boyd comes to mind, so he's a safe play. All right, what about this one, Hooper or Andrews? I know people have been a little bit disappointed with Mark Andrews, but, you know, tight end has been so nasty this year. I, if you got a guy like Mark Andrews, I, I'm just using him. i got to keep playing that guy. Yeah, it's been a weird up-and-down season for Hooper, obviously. Now, like we talked about, they have the Texans who are terrible up against the tight end. You know, it, it's – it's a tough thing to sit there and keep on rolling out Andrews because he's been letting you down primarily because Lamar Jackson has been letting you down, but I up against the Patriots, I feel like they're going to have to score to an extent. The Patriots normally play up to their level of competition or down to the level of competition. So I think this could actually be a lot better game. Now, do I think it's going to be high scoring? Absolutely not. But I think that Mark Andrews is going to be pivotal if the Ravens do win. So I think I'm going to lean towards Andrews on this one as well and go with the stud over the volatile Austin Hooper. All right. Love it. So let's, let's go ahead and go to your next section for the questionables. Yeah. So this week, actually, we don't have a, a very long questionable list. A lot of teams have been getting out those injury reports early and we're kind of knowing who's starting or sitting. So yeah, these first three time, guys, man. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. These first three guys are listed as questionable, but I expect all three of them to play. We got Kenyon Drake with the ankle injury. I did want to know with Kenyon Drake, um, he's been hampered all year with a lower body injury, and some suspect it's his ankle that's been uh, bothering him. Um, it was unclear based on the injury reports and some of the things, whether it was a low ankle, low ankle sprain, high ankle sprain. I think for that reason, you could see Kenyon Drake's workload 
managed a little bit. Chase Edmonds has been playing admirably, so I think you could see a lot of Chase Edmonds. So for Kenyon Drake, even though he starts, if you have other options, I'd kind of be taking a wait-and-see approach with Drake. Jerry Judy had that shoulder injury. He's expected to play. I've gotten a couple questions on Twitter about this next guy, TJ Hawkinson, with a toe injury. I, I do He's want to expect- point out, too, they did say that, that Kenyon Drake is most likely going to be on a limited snap count and that Chase Edmonds Perfect. should lead the uh, lead that backfield in touches this week is what they're assuming. Yeah, I didn't miss that. So I, I mean, I missed that, so I appreciate you pointing that out because that's kind of what I was thinking. So it's nice to see when we kind of mind meld there and yeah. uh, the report. what a teamwork is for, thing. man. Hey, man, we're doing it. We're doing it. Um, TJ Hawkinson, toe injury. I haven't gotten a lot of information on this. I don't know the severity. The fact that he's expected to play, if I have TJ Hawkinson, I just talked about how the tight end landscape has been kind of messy this year. I'm still playing TJ Hawkinson and, and hoping for the best. The last guy here who I think is a true questionable at this point is we got Damian Harris with the chest slash rib injury. Um, if he's listed as questionable at this point, and they haven't ruled him out based on that injury. A lot of it is pain tolerance. So I would expect him to play this this week. So I know that's a, a little bit risky. Um, I think because the Patriots have a later game. I, I can't I don't remember off the top of my head, but I, I would expect Damian Harris to uh to play this week. They actually have a ton of late games this week, but yeah, the Patriots are gonna be late. They're actually an eight twenty game tonight. Okay. So they're they're a nighttime game. <laughs> I honestly like I feel like it's gonna be a Rex Burkhead week. If anything, maybe even a James White could have a decent week. Um, they did not activate Sony Michelle off of IR. So that's a good thing if you're a Damon Harris owner. But for me, I wouldn't risk it. I'd I'd just rather stick with a different guy because even when he does play, he's still kind of hit or miss to an extent. No, I think I think that's fair. All right, let's go ahead and knock out these questions then. Uh, that was a pretty short injury report. Is there anybody else that you might want to bring up? Do we have any quarterback questions or anything? Like any, anybody um, that's come off the top of your head? No, Gardner Minshew's out for another week, so you're going to get Jake Luton or Lutton. I can't, I don't know how to pronounce his name. I think it's Luton. Um, the other one I've been seeing on Twitter, and it's not for this week, is, is Austin Eckler. Everyone saw that Instagram video of him running some sprints, and people are speculating he's going to be back next week. Is he going to be soon? 13, right? He actually. Yeah, he he came out on Twitch and said that he was gonna he was eyeing a week thirteen return, which based on his injury, it was a pretty significant hamstring injury. It wasn't like some of these other hamstring injuries we were talking about with Debo Samuel and Lavisca Chenault. Um, he had what's called like a proximal tendon tendon issue. Blood supplies blood supply is not really great to that area. It takes a lot longer to heal. So week 13, I think, is probably the first time that we see Austin Eckler. And then even when he comes back, are you going to feel great playing him? So maybe not even until week 14 is the first time that you might be able to use Austin Eckler this year. Kalen Balaj, you know, league winner. <laughs> All right. Gross. He, he looked good, though. He really did. All right. And it, it killed me, too, because I actually had, uh, I had a lineup that could have won uh, a few grand in DFS last week. And unfortunately, guess who I started? Justin Jackson, who I never start, ever. And then he ends up getting hurt. So, all right, let's go ahead and let's answer these questions, knock them out. PPR pick two, Chubb, Duke Johnson, Chase Edmonds. She needs the upside. What's going on, Helena? How are you doing this morning? Uh, all right, we need a win. We need the upside for this one. Uh, Duke Johnson, he's shown some flashes, man. This guy has shown potential to make big plays, and he should have been a bell cow coming out of college. However, he just not he doesn't have the offensive line there. He hasn't been forming as well. And of course, you know, when it comes to Watson, he doesn't pass the rent, running back in the red zone. So his target premiums and his touch premiums go down significantly. So I think that Duke Johnson is more of a floor play. Meanwhile, you have the high upside plays with Chase Edmonds and Chubb. What do you think? I I agree with that for the most part. If I had to pick two of these guys, I would definitely pick Chubb. The only thing that makes it interesting about Duke Johnson is there is literally nobody else there. They had to activate CJ Procise and Buddy Holloway or Holloway. I've never even heard of that guy. And we yeah, haven't seen CJ Procise player. since Yeah, we haven't seen CJ Procise since like 2017. So Howl, I think you could see Okay, yeah. It just hit go. me. I was trying to think of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. It's like, it, it, but the fact that we're struggling with his name, I mean, should tell you everything you know. I think you could see just a ton of Duke, Duke Johnson this week, and it might not be pretty, but just on volume alone, he can eke out a touchdown and have a good game. So I, I'm okay with, honestly, either one of these. I think you nailed it with, with Edmonds for sure. I think we both agree Chubb is the guy that you're definitely going to play and then pick one, two between Duke Johnson or Edmonds. Yeah, like I said, I think 
Duke Johnson has a higher floor, but I think Chase Edmonds just has a higher ceiling over there. Duke Johnson could punch it in for, you know, two touchdowns, though, and you never know with his breakaway run ability. I mean, he gets mm-hmm. those eight, nine-yard chunks pretty regularly. You know, one missed tackle, and we were talking about taking one to the house. All right, what's up, Sean? How you doing, man? How you doing this morning? Glad to see that you're in with us. We got a 10-team league over here. Half-point PPR. We need two running backs, one flex. Nick Chubb's going to be all over this questionnaire today. And honestly, I feel like Nick Chubb and both Kareem Hunt, I should say both Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb, um, are both viable options this week. Like, I think that they can both be productive, especially if they're not going to be passing the the ball a whole lot for, for Cleveland. So we have Nick Chubb, we have Kareem Hunt, Josh Jacobs, Giovanni Bernard, Tyler Boyd. Starting wide receivers are McLaurin and Woods. I would leave the starting receivers. Um, I think that you can attack. We talked about it earlier. I think you can attack the Steelers in the slot with Tyler Boyd. But I think I'd rather go with the three studs over here with Chubb, Kareem Hunt, and Josh Jacobs. Completely agree. I, I uh, you know, some people feel icky about playing two running backs on the same team, but they're playing the Texans, man. I mean, that Texans defense is terrible against the run against the pass doesn't matter uh so i'd be firing up nick chubb and kareem hunt and then yeah josh jacobs is your stud running back gotta play him too i'm gonna go ahead and hold off on giovanni bernard for sure this week though that's a definite bench for me all right we got chark or more dj moore's been having a rough time man but they've been double teaming him uh they've been triple teaming him we saw the best example i could give of what's been going on with dj moore this season is he ends up having a couple good games, and then the last interception of the game, right, where Teddy Bridgewater threw a bomb, I think it was against the Atlanta Falcons, and DJ Moore was covered by three guys, and they ended up losing the game. That's literally what he has to deal with almost every single play in every single game. He's looking at a safety over the top. He's looking at a cornerback on the outside that's going to be one-on-one coverage, and then half the time they drop a middle linebacker in to make sure that they can't get beat underneath by either, you know, of course, uh, uh, Robbie Anderson or – DJ Moore. So with Curtis Samuel, you know, able to kind of take some pressure off that, maybe teams are going to actually start paying attention to him. Might actually open up some opportunity for more. But I think I want to go Chark on this one by a hair. I mean, Moore has a little bit more boom potential in my opinion. But with Jair Alexander possibly an out, I'd probably lean Chark. Yep, and I just checked. Uh, Jair Alexander is definitely out. They listed him as an inactive today. So uh, you okay. definitely want to go Chark. Uh, that would be my pick. No surprise to anybody. <laughs> All right, Balazs or Pope going to be the guy this week? If Drake is active, do we play him? I would say no, Facebook user. You do not play Drake if he's active. Um, you know, like I said, he's going to have a very limited snap count. I would probably pivot to somebody else. Now, can we see him with two touchdowns? And, and 40 yards rushing, absolutely. That's a definite possibility. But I'd rather not risk it, you know, unless you you need, you know, some sort of crazy upside and he gives you a breakaway run. But I'd rather pivot off. Now, Balaj or Pope is going to be the guy. Balaj got put back onto the training, uh, I mean, onto the practice squad, right, after this this week, this past week. Yeah. In hopes that Train Pope would actually, you know, be healthy and ready, ready to play. So what's the update with active and inactive? Do you have that in front of you? So, I mean, Kalen Balaj, they activated him. He's up. He's going to play today. Um, what about Train Pope? Is he in? I th- I'm pretty sure. Let me verify that. But I think Pope is in as well. So, you could – I think uh, it's going to be a three-headed committee there with Balaj, Pope, and, and Joshua Kelly. And It's not something I really want to touch until I see what's going to happen, to be honest with you. Um, it, this is a very confusing backfield, and, and whoever the hot hand is going to be, it's going to be the guy. So, I'd actually stay away from either one of those guys. If you have to pick one of these three, let's just say, I'd probably lean Drake over the other two just because you know that Drake is at least going to have a role. Even if Chase Edmonds gets hot, at least you know Drake is still going to come in and breathe that breather back. We don't know if Balaj is going to be the breather back or if he's going to be this, you know, the main guy. We don't know, you know, what's going to happen in this backfield. So if you have to pick one of these three, I'm going to lean Drake, but I don't like any one of these three, to be honest with you. Yeah, I, I think that's fair, too, because <clears throat> like you said, you, you at least know uh, Kenyon Drake's going to get some workload. Um, I know a lot of people like, you know, Kalen Blage, but I got some breakdowns here between him and Joshua Kelly last week. Joshua Kelly outsnapped him. Um, he ran more routes than him. He had more targets than him. He had more touches than him. The only thing that was different is Kalen Blage had four red zone touches and Joshua Kelly had zero. So if you look at crazy. the workload, yeah, if you look at the workload, actually, the Chargers are using Joshua Kelly as that guy, but, you know, Kalen Balaj got that touchdown and that sw- uh, tilted the fantasy points in his favor. So they weren't really using him a lot. The fact that they put him down on the practice squad and pulled him back up uh, tells you what they kind of think about him as a, as a depth piece. So I, I'd be staying away from Balaj. 
Do you want to read that next question up there and, and start it out for us? I'm actually looking something up on that as we speak. Yep. So uh, Helena again asks uh, PPR. She wants to know if she should play uh, Melvin Gordon or Philip Lindsay against the Raiders. So Ooh. I'll take this. I'll take this while, while Chase is doing some research here. I, I think you got to play Melvin Gordon o over Philip Lindsay. I know people are excited about Philip Lindsay. He, he has some juice for sure, but um, Melvin Gordon, although the last three weeks have been pretty disappointing, he's still what you would consider a workhorse running back. Um, so I would be playing him just from a pure floor standpoint. You know that he's going to get some touches. Uh, he's always a threat to, to score a touchdown in the red zone there. So I, I'd be playing Melvin Gordon or Phil Lindsay. Yeah, I mean, I think that they both have a good matchup. But while Melvin Gordon is completely just dominating him in snaps, uh, you know, it's a situation as to where, like, I would expect maybe Philip Lindsay to see a few more targets, and that's just not the case. Um, Philip Lindsay's upside is completely limited. Limited. Meanwhile, his floor isn't great either. I mean, 2.3 points last week up against Kansas City, 7.9. So he has a very limited ceiling while a very low floor. I'm going to go Gordon, who at least has the upside and could get you a couple touchdowns in there. Uh, Philip Lindsay only has one touchdown so far in the season out of the five games that he's played. So I'm going Gordon for sure. It's not even a question for me. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't, uh, you know, misunderstanding a certain situation because so many people do like Philip Lindsay. All right, on to Sean's question. What's up, Sean? Uh, should I start Foles or Baker Mayfield in his fantasy league? I I, I think this is the same guy that was actually on uh, on Twitter possibly earlier and asked me this question, and I said gross right off the bat. I didn't have an answer for him. <laughs> This is such a gross matchup, man. Like, because Baker Mayfield, he's not going to get the volume this week because of the the weather conditions that he's going to be dealing with. Not to say that he even gets, you know, those that volume, anyways. <sighs> Meanwhile, you have Nick Foles, who can't hit open receivers, who I cannot stand. I hate Nick Foles probably more than any other player in the NFL. Uh, you know, Mitchell Trubisky should be back in there. It should be the Mitchell Trubisky show. At least, you know, he's mobile enough to avoid the sacks that, or at least, you know, avoid the throwaway sacks, whatever it is that that Foles keeps taking. So honestly, like up against the Vikings, I know it's a sexier matchup, but I kind of want to still lean Baker on this and just hope he gets a couple of screen passes, you know, hope he hits the tight end inside the red zone, Austin Hooper a couple of times, you know, maybe Harrison Bryant. Like I don't, I can't get behind. I can't get behind Foles, man. I really can't. Yeah. He did all right. What was it last week? He did all right. We, we made a bet on whether it was Lutton or, uh, Bay, or, or Foles last week, didn't we? And I, I think yeah, I beat it, you by like 0. 0.5 points or something. Did you? I, I it, it was close. Uh, you might have, though. I, I, I agree with you, though. And uh, so the Bears are claiming that Mitchell Trubisky still has a shoulder injury. So he's not even active this week. And that's so it's not even like um, Mitch Trubisky could, could push him for push Nick Foles out of there. So I'm going with you. Like I said, with, with Baker Mayfield, Foles has been pretty disappointing this year. I, I had. Um, higher hopes for him in, in Chicago, but it hasn't worked out. Let me, let me rephrase this because I do like to answer high upside versus floor questions. If you already have like, you know, if you're close or you have the, you know, the winning, you know, point projection, I would go with Baker, but if you need some upside, Foles can always throw t three touchdowns up against a terrible Minnesota defense, but he can also give you, you know, eight points, you know, on the week. So if you need upside, like if you're projected to lose by a significant amount, go Foles. If you're projected to have a close matchup or win, go with Baker. All right. Helena, again, Helena's lining up the questions. I guess we're setting her old She's roster for today. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Devontae Parker versus Claypool. Now, Devontae Parker and Mike Isek are going to be the only real two options, you know, for uh, for Miami this week with Tua at quarterback. Uh, but it really makes me nervous. I think that Tua is going to have to spread the ball around in this one. And I was looking for a Tua stack in DFS, but I was like, I don't trust anybody in this offense, you know? They're going to hone yeah. in on, on Parker and Parker did very well up against double teams last year, but that was with Ryan Fitzpatrick slinging him the rock. You know, Ryan Fitzpatrick wasn't scared. He was playing with house money last year. So he was just throwing it up to him. I don't know that Tua does that. I've never seen Tua do that because Tua's wide receivers has, have always been able to get open. So if he has the gajones to sit there and throw jump balls to Devontae Parker, sure. Devontae Parker is a great option volume wise. I just don't know that he forces the ball to Devontae Parker as much as we've seen Fitzpatrick do it last year. Claypool, meanwhile, has to share a bunch of uh, a bunch of targets, and they have worse. They have the worst weather conditions, by the way, uh, for any game this week, I believe. Um, they're looking at 50 mile an hour winds uh, with wet field conditions. 
So I probably go Devontae Parker in hopes that he forces them the ball, but I don't love either one of these options. Like I'm not like, oh shit, this guy's my lock. Um, you never know with Claypool, man. He can end up having, you know, a, a 80 yard, you know, touchdown reception or, or an end around for 20 yards and get a touchdown. So I think I'm going to lean Devontae Parker. How are you feeling about this one? Yeah, I like what, everything that you said there. Uh, you made a good point about the the field conditions and the weather conditions uh, with uh, the Pittsburgh game. So I'm going to go, you know, Devontae Parker as well for the, for the reasons you said. I mean, this is we weird. Don't know we're agreeing what, on almost everything this week. I know we we never we, we need to we need to find some to disagree. I'm going to disagree <laughs> with you on the next one just just for the heck of it because we never agree this much. DJ Moore benched this week. I wouldn't say benched. Um, but yeah, if you can find some better options up until he proves it, he has these boom weeks though. Like he has these weeks. He's still wide receiver too, right? Like back in like wide receiver 20 overall or something, he's close. So yeah. I don't think he deserves a bench, but you know, if, if you have better options with better matchups, you know, it, it's something that's where I wouldn't think twice. Like I wouldn't be like, Oh man, I can't believe I'm sitting DJ more this week. Yeah. All right. Um, on to Jeremy. What's up, Jeremy? How you doing, man? Uh, DJ Dallas for net or someone else. I thought you had a keeper question for me. That's not a keeper question. All right. So DJ, he, he messaged me right before I hopped on here. I was like, you got to join the live show. Cause I don't have time to go into all this on a, on a text message. All right. DJ Dallas uh, for net or somebody else for net. I don't even know what's going on over there. Uh, he's supposed to be the receiving back. Like at third down, hurry up back. Uh, they're not running the ball enough to really see any of that come to fruition. Uh, you know, they plan on pounding the rock this week, but that could be more of a Ronald Jones, you know, beneficiary type thing, type role. Um, although I do think that Fournette could end up grabbing it. Meanwhile, DJ Dallas has the whole entire backfield to himself once again. Uh, he's going to see the volume. And let's see, their matchup this week is up against the Rams, right? So it's a little bit tougher matchup. They got the Rams, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that's a little bit of a tougher one. I'd probably go with the easier matchup um, with Tampa Bay this week up against the Panthers. Then go with uh, you know a tough matchup with DJ Dallas, regardless of the volume. Yeah, I. I uh, Although I we could I see some checkdowns, by the way. For sure, for sure. I, I know I said I was going to disagree with you for the heck of it, but I think I actually am going to pick DJ Dallas. He's a. Con- I talked about this before. He's a converted wide receiver from from college, heavily involved in the passing game. The fact that Chris Carson and Carl Tide are out. Um, I think plays in his favor. So I would play DJ Dallas. It's worth noting, obviously, Leonard Fournette best game this season was against the Panthers. We had 12 carries for over 100 yards, two touchdowns, and uh, uh, four receptions as well. So I understand wanting to go to Fournette. I don't know um, if there's a terribly bad choice, but I think I'd lean DJ Dallas just by a little bit. Yeah, DJ Dallas, man, is is a hell. He's a hell of a receiver. Um, you know, we've, we've seen it throughout training camp. If you guys missed it, I was going to try and pull it up real quick, but I'm not, I'm not seeing it right off the bat. Uh, his snags that he had in training camp were absolutely insane. Russell Wilson trusts him, uh, to get the ball, you know, at least four or five yards down the field and get him into better third down situations. Um, he's a good play overall. I just think I'd rather go with the, the Fournette touchdown floor. All right, PPR, Newton or Stafford this week. Stafford has a really tough matchup up against Washington. They're probably the most underrated passing defense out there. Uh, they, they struggled up against the Giants, which was weird. Uh, you know, the Giants actually started three rookies last week, and those rookies came out really hungry and kind of dominated that, that defensive front seven from Washington. I don't expect that to happen again. I expect them to get Stafford quite a few times. Stafford is missing Kenny Galladay. Uh, it's it's going to be a rougher week from for Stafford than I normally expect. And I'm a huge Stafford guy. I pick Stafford almost every week in DFS to play some sort of lineup. I'm not even getting close to him this week. In fact, the only player that I'm playing, including Swift, and I, I love Swift. Swift is my favorite running back in the NFL right now. I'm not even playing Swift this week. The only player that I'm playing for the Lions is going to be Hawkinson. But Newton's not very uh, good. So that's a tough, that's a tough, that makes it even tougher. Yeah, and I, I think I'm going to leave. This, I don't really like one of these. But I think it's a tough decision. Um, I would lean Stafford. Cam Newton hasn't really been playing well. Uh, they get the Ravens this week, which is is a pretty gross matchup. I, you know, I haven't looked at it entirely in depth, but um, I had some issues with with Cam Newton coming into the season in terms of shoulder stability and kind of getting fatigued after seasons with uh, multiple shoulder injuries. We've seen his, you know, adjusted uh, yards per pass attempt drop first two weeks above eight down to four two, negative two creeping back up this past week into a six and seven yards per pass attempt. But um, 
there might be something going on there. Again, with the with the Ravens matchup, uh, I think I would probably stay away from Cam Newton if I could and play Stafford. Honestly, I'd look for a streaming option on this week. Uh, there are plenty of, of solid it's streaming options like Jared Goff and stuff. Um, I, I don't like either one of those guys this week. I mean, when we look at it, we have the Baltimore Ravens are getting pressure on 25% or 24.3% of the dropbacks. Meanwhile, Washington is getting pressure on 25.7% of the dropbacks. Um, neither one of those guys do great when they take hits. So it's something as to where I would look for a streaming option if you have a guy out there in your waivers. But I if I had to pick point. one, you know, I think Cam Newton has a little bit of a, a higher upside. And I also am a little bit more concerned about Stafford's health. Um, you know, getting hit multiple times. All right, we got another Stafford question. Bridgewater versus Stafford. I'm going to go Bridgewater in this one. I don't even think it's close. And, you know, it's – I know it's Tampa Bay, but they did very well up against Tampa Bay. I believe it was week one, so – or week two. It's not that – you know, a little bit of a change over there, but still. Bridgewater's always solid. And he's showing us some rushing floor too. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. I I think uh, we kind of picked on Stafford, so the pivot to to Teddy Bridgewater makes a lot of sense to me. All right. Start one at the flex. Melvin Gordon, Brandon Ayuk, Darrell Henderson, Marvin Jones Jr. All right, here's the deal. Red Washington actually has some blown coverage issues with deep receivers. When we talk about Marvin Jones Jr. over here. So Marvin Jones Jr. could end up you know, walking away from this game with two touchdowns. I doubt that that happens, but it's very possible. Uh, meanwhile, Dar- Darrell Henderson up against the Seahawks. Seahawks have been actually very, very good up against the, the running backs so far this year that run the ball up the middle. So I don't love that option as much. Uh, Brandon Ayuk, he's playing, right? He's definitely in. Yep. They have got – who do they have again? They've got the Saints. Okay. Oh, man, he's going to have to see Janoris Jenkins this week, I'm assuming, unless Rich, he gets covered by Richie James. Then Brandon Ayuk is kind of sexy, but I still don't love that. Um, I'd go Melvin Gordon. I don't even think it's close out of these guys. I'm torn between Brandon Ayuk and Melvin Gordon. Um I typically lean running backs. uh, Yeah, safer options. Yeah, even though Melvin Gordon hasn't been great, but uh, yeah. Hey, guys, make sure you all go check us out on YouTube, by the way. YouTube.com slash Fantasy Intervention. That way you guys can stay up to date with all of our streams. We're going close to 10 to 12 episodes a week now. Uh, YouTube.com slash Fantasy Intervention. Make sure you guys hit subscribe. Give us a review. We appreciate you guys. Once again, that's YouTube.com slash Fantasy Intervention. All right, Helena, you got another one. Thoughts on Alshon Jeffrey's return? Wanting to risk it? No, not until we see what's going on. Um, you know, there's a good chance that Bradbury actually covers Alshon Jeffrey this week. You know, so I don't, I mean, I think that Bradbury is more so going to be on Fulgham, but Bradbury doesn't travel to the slot. He doesn't deal well with slot receivers. And that's what we saw the last time they faced off and Fulgham had a great game. So if Bradbury does stay on the outside, on his left-hand side of the field, he's most likely going to see a lot of Alshon Jeffrey if Alshon Jeffrey does get a high snap count. That's if he even plays. So if he yeah. plays a good amount, then you know he could end up being screwed anyways. I don't love that. I don't love him at all this week. I want to see what happens yeah. first. I, I could be wrong. I mean, Alshon Jeffrey is obviously, you know, when he's healthy, he's been a good talent in the league. I'm staying away from these guys coming off Liz Frank injuries. Um, I know he took a lot longer to come <clears> back and we would presume that he's healthy, but uh, you made a good point. I think he does probably have a, a limited snap count. Um, Evan Ingram had a sing- similar injury la- last off season. Evan Ingram got off to an extremely slow start to start the season. I think you could see a similar trajectory for, for Alshon Jeffrey. I'm staying away at all costs. Yep. I hear that PPR chase Edmonds or Antonio Brown. Uh, it's not close for me. Even if you need upside, it's not close for me. Chase Edmonds. Yes. All right. Point five PPR Judy geo and Rojo. Who do we got here? Start that one out. I'm looking at some of the questions. Yeah. Trying to see if we need to hurry it up. No, you're good. Um, half point PPR. I probably I'm torn between Jerry Judy and Geo. I know Geo has got a bad matchup, but he's definitely involved in the passing game and in a half point PPR where you're going to get some of that volume uh, back from Geo. I don't think it's a bad play. So if you're going floor here, I probably lean in Geo just because I think he's going to be involved a lot. But if you need a little upside play, you saw what Jerry Judy's upside was last week. I'm going Rojo, then I'm going Judy on this one. Uh, Rojo's going to see some work this week. It's inevitable. All right, so we're going to have to go through this because I didn't realize how many comments we had coming in. They all just loaded up a second ago. So we got something to go through. Let's go ahead and go rapid fire. 
All right. Do it. I, I mean, if there's somebody that we need to talk about because we haven't brought them up yet, we will bring them up a little bit more in depth. But for the most part, we're going to try and fire through this, guys. All right. Pick five uh, or point five. Pick one. PP or the point five PPR. Pick one between Geo Moss and McKissick. McKissick should see a decent workload, but he should not have to worry about protecting Alex Smith as much. I'm actually going to go Moss on this one. I agree. Cool. That's crazy. All right. Dallas yeah. or Goldman. I cannot stand the Giants running back situation. They have the Eagles this week, right? Yeah. They have the Eagles this week. Uh, that's You can't run on the Eagles. And if you do, it's it's brutal yards. Wayne Goldman can do that, but will he? I doubt it. I'm going to go Dallas on this one. Uh, just Dallas yeah. because of the, the reception upside. Absolutely. All right. So this is his uh, keeper question, which I told him we would oh, answer okay. on here. Trade Eckler in a third round pick next year. By the way, he gets to keep eight. eight uh, he gets to keep eight people, uh, from what I remember. Okay. Um, so, a third round pick is essentially eleventh round pick, but it's the third overall, and rookies are included in that. Um, okay. So Keenan Allen's produced at a very high end level this year. Eckler, we don't know what's going on. Eckler could go off next year, but I kind of like this trade if you need to win this year. And for for what I remember, Jeremy's team was very competitive. Um, so if you're in a position where you can win this year, go after Keenan Allen. I completely agree. All right. We got a jet going overhead, guys. All right. Dallas or Gallman. I think we just covered this one. PPR. We both went Dallas, right? Yep. All right. Davis. Mike Davis or Duke Johnson. Duke Johnson is going to see all the workload like he brought up earlier. Meanwhile, Curtis Samuel could vulture some carries, some receptions away from Mike Davis. It is a decent matchup, but honestly, Tampa Bay is going to come out pissed off. I'm looking at Duke Johnson this week. Yeah, I, I think – that one's closer than I think, but uh, I'd be I'm okay playing Dave, Duke Johnson just from a volume standpoint. Is Jeremy Chin in or out this week? We can come back to this question. Can you look up if Jeremy Chin is in or out? Yep. All right. Should I start Zach Moss over DJ Moore? Been tilting on it all day. That's a tough one, my friend. Uh, you know, it's something I swear we've seen Zach Moss be actually relevant so far this you know this past few weeks or past couple weeks. I. I kind of like it up against the Cardinals. I think I'd go Zach Moss over DJ Moore this week. I know. I, I love DJ Moore this offseason, but, yeah, I, you just can't continue to use him based on what he's producing, so I'm okay with Zach Moss. Jeremy Chin yeah. is in, by the way. He's active. Okay, I would probably go then back to this other question. Or I'd go Andrews over Gronk. Jeremy Chin has been phenomenal while covering the tight end this year. Um, he's been shutting tight ends down when he's healthy. Yeah, Andrews. I agree. All right. Uh, Chris Godwin or Curtis Samuel? Curtis Samuel is kind of like the Ooh. new hot toy right now. And he's going to be up against I Sean know. Murphy Bunting, who has been very subpar in coverage this year. Uh, I kind of I, like, I feel like they're going to use Curtis Samuel as a decoy to an extent. I still think he's going to get touches, but he's had a lot of his touchdowns reliant on like these 2015 type yard carries and these weird trick plays. I don't know if it's going to work this week. And Chris Godwin's like, I mean, he's almost guarantee, you know, for that, that, athletic profile up against a very uh, mediocre uh, middle of the field defense for Carolina. I think I'm going to go Chris Godwin on this one. I think I am too. I, I People have been disappointed with Chris Godwin's play this year, but I, I trust him more than I do Curtis Samuel. I know Curtis Samuel's on a hot streak, but I trust Godwin a little bit more. Hey, Danielle, how you doing? Love this girl. She comes through all of our episodes. Absolutely love this girl. So we need to make love sure it. we help her out. Uh, she's Let's got Jimmy it. Graham or Andrews this week. Um, Jimmy Graham, obviously he's been kind of hit or miss after a very hot start to the season, seeing a ton of red zone targets. Uh, he's got the Vikings this week and the Vikings, they've been solid, I believe up against the tight end position. I don't think they've been like phenomenal, but I'm pretty sure they've been solid. And honestly, like Mark Andrews is just, he's too much of a, uh, you know, a stud to, to bench. I know it's tough cause he's been letting you down, but I know. Okay, so yeah, I agree. I, I agree with you, man. I, I, a lot of people have been asking about Mark Andrews. I'm just gonna keep plugging him in there. You drafted him high, likely. I mean, I, it's it's you know the Ravens' offense with Lamar Jackson. I, I think you got to play Mark Andrews and just keep hoping for the best. I will say this though, Jimmy Graham's not a bad play. Um, in the past four matchups for the Vikings, they've allowed either a touchdown or over 100 yards to the tight end position. So. Um, that makes it very, very enticing to play Jimmy Graham. I don't hate that play at all. Uh, if you don't feel safe playing playing Andrews, I don't, I don't, I think that's probably like a back to back uh, ranking for this week. All right, uh, Edmonds or Curtis Samuel at the flex. 
I'm still going to keep my Edmonds take this week. Yes, sir. All right, DJ Chark or Deontay Johnson? It's not even close for me. I'm going Chark on this one. I don't trust Deontay Johnson and that Steelers offense, especially with the 50 mile an hour winds and the bad field conditions. Hmm. I really wanted. To, I was going to say Chark, but then we got a lot of Dante Johnson exposure this week, and I was feeling good about it. But I'd probably go Chark. Okay. Um, I actually like this one. This one's a lot closer for me than probably any of the questions so far outside of the Graham and Andrews question. Uh, Curtis Samuel or Antonio Brown? Uh, Curtis Samuel, I think, actually has a higher floor, which is weird for me to say. I think that he yeah. will get the touches, but I think he's going to get used as you know as a decoy a lot in these trick play type situations. Meanwhile, Antonio Brown did see the targets last week. He was kind of force fed. But guess what? He's most likely going to be matched up against either Troy Pride, who I believe is back in or borderline back in, or he's going to face up against just a slew of these backup corners. I like Antonio Brown for the upside. Meanwhile, I like Curtis Samuel for the floor. Yeah, I, I think um, Antonio Brown was involved enough last week that you could envision him kind of getting more involved, and I'd, I'd be more comfortable starting him this week against the, um, against, uh, the Panthers. So uh, I'm, I'm okay with Antonio Brown. That beanie was getting real hot. I was wondering, are you getting a little toasty? Yeah, I'm like sweating now, pretty much. All these, <laughs> these questions are getting me nervous, man. Mm. Uh, all right, Samuels, uh, Gallman, or Tim Patrick. I'm going Curtis Samuel. I would too. Yeah, I would too. Um, I think I Gallman think has a, a decent floor just with all the running, the injuries that the Giants have. But I, I like Curtis Samuel there. What's up, Jordan? You got approved, man. You got approved by Facebook, just like Don Yell did. Hey. We get to see your face, and we get to get to say who this question is from. So this is for Jordan. Baker Mayfield or Tua this week. Also, Antonio Gibson or Kareem Hunt at RB2. All right. So, Baker has a really tough situation passing-wise. Uh, meanwhile, I don't love Tua's options, but I think I have to go Tua here. I think he's going to spread it around. I don't think there's going to be a stud receiver over there this week for Tua, um, unless he starts feeding, force-feeding, uh, you know, Devontae Parker the ball, which we haven't seen yet. So, I'm going Tua. And then we also have Antonio Gibson or Kareem Hunt at RB2. Ooh, I want to say Kareem Hunt, but I really do love Antonio Gibson this week. Yeah, I agree with the two apart. The running back part is definitely more difficult. Um, I think it's win-win. I, I don't think you have a bad yeah. choice here. I I would go Kareem Hunt because I really I really like the Browns matchup this week against the Texans. So I'm try any Browns player that I can fit in my lineup. I'm going to try to do that. So that's where I would give the edge to Kareem Hunt. All right, we got ten minutes, so we're going to need extreme rapid fire here. All right, DJ Moore, Brown, there McKinnon, Flex, McKinnon, Moore. Ooh, the workload, though, for McKinnon should be insane. All right, full point PPR, Hunter Henry or Austin Hooper? I'm going to go Hunter Henry. Henry. Okay, cool. Uh, Wayne Gallman, J.D. McKiss McKissick or Kenyon Drake, full PPR. Since full PPR, I am going J.D. McKissick, but I like Antonio Gibson more this week, just for the record. Uh, yeah, full PPR, I can go with McKissick. All right. Danny Amendola or Hunter Henry? Hunter Henry. Yes. All right, uh, we got PPR sit Landry with the weather. My only option this week is Slayton. Uh, Slayton should be seeing coverage from uh, uh, Slay, so I'm actually going to go with Landry on this one. Who should you know? He's he sees short targets, like he doesn't get his balls down the field. So I don't think the weather is going to affect Landry as much. What concerns me is the volume that Baker Mayfield has and seeing how many targets he gets. I agree. All right. Pick two wide receivers in a flex, Lockett, Sanders, Davis, Duke Johnson, Singletary, Ingram, or Nelson. Okay, two. so we need three players. Let's go with Nelson Aguilar as the wide receiver. And okay. I think – I don't like Lockett this week, but I think you have to go with Lockett over Emmanuel Sanders. Yeah, I would definitely – if I'm picking two wide receivers, I'm probably picking Lockett and then – I don't know if I, I really like Nelson Aguilar. I would probably pick Lockett, uh, Sanders, and then Duke Johnson would be my picks. Yeah, I got to go Nelson Aguilar up against the the Broncos. I think he's going to have a field day. It's going to be him or Ruggs, one of the two. Um, and then we have, yeah, I'm going to go Duke Johnson over Singletary or Ingram or Davis. All right, let's go with Evans or Moore. I'm going to go Evans. Yeah. 
All right, pick two, PPR, highest floor, Hunter Henry, Amendola, Kirk, and Curtis Samuel. Christian Kirk should have a decent week. Curtis Samuel should have a good week. Hunter Henry, I mean, I'm sorry, Amendola actually does have a decent floor this week. The, the Washington football team is, is, they're not bad in the slot, but they're definitely beatable in the slot. So I think that Amendola is not a bad play, but I would probably lean Kirk and Curtis Samuel on this one. Yeah, we haven't got a lot of Christian Kirk questions. I think the way Christian Kirk's been playing in that Arizona offense, you got to play him regardless of, of what you're looking for. All right, Miles Sanders or Allen Robinson, the flex. Obviously, we have Allen Robinson dealing with a knee issue. Uh, Miles Sanders should be mm -hmm. all the way healthy now, isn't he? He's like 100% yep. good to go. Yep. Uh, Miles Sanders has the Giants. The Giants have actually been a lot better than, than what a lot of people have had, or what a, you know, what contrary to popular belief. That's probably the mm -hmm. best way to put it. Um, but yep. I still like Miles Sanders slightly over Allen Robinson. Uh, I do still like Allen Robinson, by the way. Wentz or Locke would, for the QB? Uh, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Okay, yeah. No, go ahead. I was going to say I agree with you, Miles Sanders. All right, Wentz or Locke for the QB? Uh, I'm going to go Locke, I think, man. Locke's been on fire in that, that second half, man. And they're probably going to be losing yeah. again. I'm good with that. All right, A-Rob, Monday night. Game time decision. Play Josh Reynolds today or wait to the decision. I like Josh Reynolds this week. Josh Reynolds is actually going to be one of my DFS plays. Um, I, yeah, I would go with, with, uh, actually, you know what? I would probably go with a Rob, wait for a Rob. And then Cordell Patterson should be a fine option. You know, he's a consolation prize. I like that. I'm going to go yeah. with the a Rob decision. Yep. I, that the fact that he had Cordell is what locked it in for me as a backup for Allen Robinson. I think Allen Robinson plays for what it's worth. Um, but yeah, having him as a backup is a good play. I'm going to go Curtis Samuel over DJ Dallas. I'm going to take the opposite. It's close. They're, they're both really close for me. All right. Start sit. Nick Chubb, Miles Sanders. Woo. Ooh. <laughs> Jinx. Um, <laughs> I, oh, man. I think I'm going to go with Miles Sanders on this one just because we don't know Nick Chubb's, you know, we don't know the volume. But I don't hate Nick Chubb. I, it's, they're both startable for me. Neither one of these guys are do not start. So I think you can go with either one. I'd probably lean Miles Sanders slightly. I'm going to lean Nick Chubb slightly, but yeah, I agree. With you. Yeah. That's not even a, a question. How many times am I going to answer Helena's questions? As long as she's the first one here and she's asking questions, <laughs> I'm going in order. I don't care. <laughs> you need to get she's got good questions. She, she needs help. She's got good questions. All right. Fant or Sanders? Let's see. I'm going to go. I'm going to go Sanders on this one. Wait, if I'm guessing yeah. that's that's Miles Sanders. If it's Emmanuel, yeah. If it's Emmanuel Sanders, I'm going Fant. If it's Miles yes. Sanders, I'm going Miles Sanders. Same. I guess you need a slit. Oh, dude, that's fucked, man. Whoever you are, I'm fucking kicking you out of the group. That's fucking gross. All right. Who the fuck is this person? Get the fuck out of here. All right, Tanyan or Everett from LA at tight end. Tanyan, they just said is active. Um, LA, like they need, Everett's been playing like off the chain, by the way. Uh, he's been getting more routes run and whatnot for all these. So yeah, I'm thinking that I'm actually going to lean God, man. With that being said, I think I'm going to lean Tanyan. Uh, we do have Alan Lazard still out. As long as Alan Lazard's out, I'm going to lean Tanyan. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm good with that. And Alan Lazard is probably going to be out. So. All right, Kim, what's up? How you doing? We haven't seen her in a while. Yeah, it's, well, she pops in every now and then. She she pops in on some random shows. So, a Rob question: Should I pick up Sterling Shepard or play Ayuk and Deontay? I love Sterling Shepard this week. I think he's going to smash. But with that being said, um, I don't know who you'd have to drop. But I like Sterling Shepard over Ayuk and over Deontay Johnson. Sterling Shepard, if he's in the slot, which is looking like what how it's going to be uh, this week, because I think the Golden Tate snaps will be limited. I love Sterling Shepard in the slot. Love it in the slot. I can't argue with the reasoning. Um, I've been kind of disappointed with Shepard. So for no real analytical, analytical reason at all, I don't really like playing him, but um, I, I think that your reasoning sound. Well, I mean, he just hasn't been able to play in the slot. His first game back in the slot, he had what, like seven receptions for 60 yards or something. All right. That's fair. Does Drake play today or should he roll with Gallman? Drake is playing. Um, mm -hmm. But the thing is, is the fact that, uh, you know, we might see him on a limited snap, snap count. They're saying that, uh, they're saying that Chase Edmonds is going to dominate the touches. So 
Gallman, I feel like this is a very close one for me, by the way, because I don't like Gallman's matchup. But I feel like Gallman's going to be the safer play. If you're projected to even get close to winning, I'd probably go Gallman. But if you need some upside, I'd probably lean Jake, Drake for his breakaway run ability. Uh, yes. I think I would lean Gallman just a little bit based on the stuff you told me about Drake and then based on what I know about his injury. But it, it's close. All right. Edmonds or Davis flex spot PPR? Hmm. I might lean, oh man. Might lean Mike Davis by a hair. I know you talked, you made a really good point about Curtis Samuel kind of stealing touches. Um, and we just talked about how Drake might not play a lot, but um, Mike Davis kind of, when he's been the RB1 in Carolina in that role, he, he's done well with it. I'm taking Edmonds. I don't like this matchup for Davis. Damn it. Uh, you got to keep up. I don't know who this is, but you got to keep up. All right, Brandon Cooks or Jerry Judy, standard format. Uh, with the wind and the conditions, it's not even a question. Jerry Judy's the answer, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, if he plays Drake, Dallas, Joshua Kelly, PPR, I would have to drop Pollard in order to get Dallas. Um, ooh. I, I would probably just I... play Drake. Yeah. I would I would play Drake, but I did this exact thing in my league uh, that I'm in, a uh, ten team league where I I'm, Tony Pollard's not playing this week, and I know Chris Carson's going to come back at some point, but DJ Dallas is playing this week, so I dropped Pollard to pick up DJ Dallas and not playing him, but just as like a high upside if he if he does well, you can maybe flip him for something. Tampa D or Washington? I know that that the Panthers did well up against them earlier in the season. Um, but it's going to be a whole different game for Tampa this week. Meanwhile, Washington, they could end up sacking Matt Safford eight times this game. I mean, that's just something that Washington does from week to week. They get eight to 10 sacks on a quarterback. It's happened like two or three times this year minimum. Uh, you know, an interception isn't out of the question. And don't forget, Matt Stafford got pulled last week. So I think I'm going to go Washington over Tampa, but I don't. I think both are winners in this one. No, you've talked up the Washington D on this show, and uh, I agree with you, so I, I would lean Washington. All right, Brandon Cooks, Fulgham, or Godwin, I need two full-point PPR. I'm going to go Godwin, and I'm going to go Fulgham. Oh, in the weather? Oh. The weather, bro. I wanted bro. to say Fulgham. I wanted to say Fulgham. Fine, because of the weather. You talked me into it. Chase and I agree on one here. It is Fulgham and Godwin. Yeah, I, you can't go Brandon Cooks with this weather. It's going to be 40-mile-an-hour winds in, in terrible conditions. All right, Tanya or Jordan Reed, 0.5 PPR. I like Jordan Reed a lot this week. He's very sneaky play. But Tanya with Lazard being out is the answer here. I do like Jordan Reed, don't get me wrong, but Tanya is the answer. Yep, Tanya. All right. Melvin Gordon or Gia Bernard? Melvin Gordon. Yep. All right, uh, Leonard Fournette, Darrell Henderson, Antonio Brown. Guys, we got like two minutes. So I'm not going to be able to get to all these questions. I'm sorry, guys. Pick like one. We literally have like 20 left. Yep. Pick one. I'm going to go Justin Jefferson. I'm going with – yeah, Justin Jefferson's a great pick, but I like Leonard Fournette too. Justin Jefferson. Though. Mike, Thomas, Evans, Boyd, Robbie, pick three. Um, let's go – Robbie, no. Let's go Boyd for sure. Evans, and I like Mike Thomas this week. I'll, I'll take Mike Thomas. Are you going yeah, Robbie? Nope. I'm, I'm agreeing with you. All right, cool. Leonard Fournette, Antonio, or I'm guessing that's Antonio Brown, not AJ Brown. Uh, Drell Henderson, Justin Jefferson. Wait, did we already answer this one? Yeah, we did. Already. Maybe Justin Jefferson, though. All right, uh, let's see. Danny Amendola or Hunter Henry. We already did this one. Hunter Henry. Uh, yep. Jerry Judy or Swift for my flex, half point PPR. Ooh, Jerry Judy. Yep. Goddard or Ingram. I love Ingram this week. I'm going in Ingram. I go Goddard. I like Goddard, but I think Ingram's just a, a great play. He's had like three straight weeks of over like 12 fantasy points or something, double digit fantasy points. And prior to that, it was like 9.2, 9.2. So. All right, Goff or Breeze. I love Jared Goff this week. I love Jared Goff this week. I think he's going to smash faces. He's up against Seattle. I don't see why you wouldn't play Jared Goff. I agree. All right. Austin Hooper, Mark Andrews, uh, Mark Andrews, and then John Brown, Devontae Parker, Jaden McKissick, full point PPR. Uh, yeah. I'm going Devontae Parker. 
Yeah, I'm going Devontae Parker, and then I'm going Mark Andrews. Agree with you. Pick two, Allen Robinson, Mike Davis, Adam Thielen, or Travis Fulgham. Fulgham and Thielen, just because we don't know <laughs> Allen Robinson. Allen Robinson plays through injuries, though, so I'm not that concerned about Allen Robinson. This yeah, year. I, I think Allen Robinson plays, so I'd play Allen Robinson and Thielen. Juju AB, Juju. Yep. APR, by the way. All right, uh, Allen Robinson, Mike Pretty Davis, solid. that same one. Yep. You already got that one. What? Is this just a repeat of them all? Is Goddard must play or fade territory? Um, I don't think he's a bad play this week, but Jarrell Preppers has been very, very good up against tight ends. So I kind of fade away from him this week. But if you, you made obviously me like pick him. one of these. Yeah, if you made me pick one of these, I would say he's more of a must play, but you can, there's other options. All right, Edmonds for this one. Yes. Tanyan or, or Cook? I'm going Tanyan. Oh, we love Robin Tanyan. Oh. As I say that. Tanyan again. Oh, that's actually a good one, but I think I still take Tanyan. I know. I might take Andrews, but I'm good with either one. All right, Robbie Anderson. Wait, uh, Swift or Robbie Anderson? I'll go Swift. I don't know. I like Robbie Anderson this week, too. I'll go, go Swift. Swift. Okay. I'll go Swift. Yeah. Yeah, I'll go Swift, too. Rodgers or Russell Wilson? I'll take Rodgers this week. Uh, I'm good with that. Gronk or Logan Thomas, I'll go Gronk, although Jeremy Chin should be draped all over Gronk's shoulders. I still think I'd take Gronk in this case scenario. I might take Thomas. Okay. Sorry, guys. We're fading quickly. We're trying to get this all done. We only got a few left, so I'm trying to hammer these out. Uh, Swift or Devontae Parker? Devontae Parker for me. Yep. Godwin, Juju, or Curtis Samuel? I'm going to go Godwin. Yep. Jerry Jeter, Swift, Judy. Okay. John Brown, Henderson, Edmonds. We already did this one. Mm -hmm. uh, we covered this, Jeremy. We said Keenan Allen if you're in a position to win. Uh, Drake, Pope, or Harris. Have Zeke on a bye. I'm going to go Drake. Yeah, but it feels gross. Yeah, it does. All right, Hooper, Ebron this week. Um, I'm going to go Hooper. I don't like Ebron's weather conditions, um, although he could come down with a touchdown. I don't really like either of these options, but I'll go Hooper. Yeah. Well, it doesn't even have anything to do with it. I'd take Hooper over Ebron. All right. Evans, Higgins, and that nasty win. Woo. Wind. Not wind. Not wind. wind. Um, I'm going with Evans on this one. I've been on Evans pretty much for every question so far with Evans involved. I'm good with that. Duke Johnson, do you have any Bernard? Or, ups, wait, Johnson. Uh, Gordon Bernard, I'll go. Uh, I'll go Gordon. I don't like uh, it. I'm go, gonna go Gordon. Yeah, I'm gonna go Duke. I just think he gets a lot of play. All right, Evan Brown, Williams, Fulgham, pick two, Fulgham and Evans. Yep. All right, guys, we're about to get out of here. Make sure you guys go check us out on Twitter. Go ahead and give your uh, your name real quick for your Twitter handle. Yep, you can find me on Twitter at the real Adam H, uh, at the real Adam underscore H, and you can find all my work at theundroppables.com. You guys can check me out at FF underscore intervention, guys. We're going to finish these up and then we're getting the fuck out. Dallas, Graham, Samuels, or Gallman? I'm going Samuels. Yeah, I'm going with that. All right, Chicago, do your Vikings. I think it'll be low scoring. Uh, it. I don't know what to expect from this game. It's going to be stupid. Um, I, I would probably take the Chicago D, um, and hope that they can stop Dalvin Cook. They stopped, uh, they stopped Derrick Henry a couple weeks ago, right? Yeah. As a Bears fan, I'm going to play the Vikings defense. I'm playing any defense against the Bears. Yeah, it makes sense. All right. Sanders, Bernard, or Gordon. This is the last question, guys. Actually, we got one more and then we're done. Uh, Gordon for this one for me. Yep. And then last but not least, guys, Myers, Jacoby Myers or Jalen Rager. If you need upside, go Rager. Rager could actually absolutely go off this game. This could be his rookie breakout, and I don't like Rager. I don't like Rager at all. This could be his rookie breakout. I would go Rager. I like Jacoby Myers a lot, but Rager could have a monster game this week. I'm going to end on some controversy. I'm going to pick Myers. Sorry, Jonathan. I hope I wish we could help, but I like Myers a lot this week. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. We'll be back next week. Make sure you guys check out our podcast. We do one on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We have, like, multiple ones each week, too. So thank you all for tuning in, and thank you for letting us intervene with your fantasy football life. We're out.
Peace.